I mean, he's uh, he's nothing but a listener. He does a great job of, uh, you know, just being all ears and being receptive to everything that's being thrown at him. Um, you know, especially when you're a rookie, it's being a rookie is a lot. You know, you got vets on the team that are asking you for a lot of a bunch of different things. You have coaches uh, telling you, you know, any and everything, and you're trying to please everyone. So, um, you know, I, he's just done a great job of just, um, you know, staying ready, always in the gym. Uh, you know, when when the full team is, you know, compounded, you know, he may not play a lot, but he understands that. And you see, you know, hasn't really been playing much this year. Had an excellent opportunity in New York to start and, um, you know, play the hell of a game. So that's just a credit to him. Obviously, him being older and understanding, but um, just being a being a professional, being a professional. Uh, I mean, you know, the Utah game, um, you know, the, the next game after that was with the Knicks. Uh, we did a great job of moving the ball. And I think in the first half of uh, even the Sixers game, you know, we, we did a good job, you know, pretty much offensively, um, you know, hanging in there and, uh, you know, playing that way. And, you know, it got a little choppy in the, in the second half. But, um, you know, it's just trying to do it consistently um playing the same way uh as a team in a whole uh, possession possession quarter to quarter which is you know very tough you know not just for us any team in the league you know it's it's tough to do it at the highest level but um there's a reason you know why we're in the nba we have to you know try to figure that out you have any extra empathy or relationship with a guy like Corey since he's not a super one and done guy no, not really. <laughs> yeah. Nah. Nah, I mean, er everybody's race is different. Everybody's not a one and done. I know if you're blessed enough to be one and done or, you know, two years, you know, me and him both, you know, graduated from college. You know, that's just our path. You know, it's nothing like a brotherhood. <laughs> yeah. Not all questions. Yeah, I mean that that helped out a lot. You know, obviously just being prepared for the NBA and my body just being a little bit, you know, just ready. Uh, but, you know, when I came to the league, it was a lot smoother because I had a head coach that really allowed me to, uh, you know, just kind of just go out there and play night in and night out, you know, right away, right off the jump with uh, Lou Walton. I mean, that helped me out tremendously, you know, uh, establishing myself in the league and uh, making a name for myself. Would you go up against physical teams like you did last night How much of that is like a mindset thing? Um, I mean, when you play with a team that's really physical, um, you know, you have to outsmart them, outquick them. Um, and also you have to match that type of physicality. Uh, I think that's something that's very, very important that, you know, we did it in, in stints um, versus uh, the Sixers team. Um, you know, they had a lot of second, second chance points that um, led to – you know, kick out threes to Cork Maz and uh, Seth Curry over and over again, um, you know, that we can eliminate and, you know, try to be more physical in those moments, um, you know, especially when we're in drops offensively, we can't have those. Um, not to get stagnant, um, you know, teams like uh, Miami, you know, they, they pack the paint and, uh, you know, they junk the game up defensively um, just with the way that they defend. It's it's not really, um, you know, how most teams guard in the NBA. You know, they blitz pick and rolls. Um, you know, they switch everything. They point switch. 
uh, which, you know, they're really good at, you know, they're top five defense. And, you know, for us, when teams do that, it's, it's easy just to, okay, switch and then try to take somebody one-on-one, -on -one. but, um, you know, having them cause confusion and, uh, you know, attacking them, you know, instead of just standing still when they switch is going to be a pivotal for us. Uh, I, you know, I gotta, I gotta definitely, you know, be more aggressive. Um, you know, I, I want to play the team game, you know, I want to be able to get people involved, um, you know, play, make and make other players better. Um, but, you know, there's certain ways, you know, I gotta, you know, find more catch and shoot threes opportunities um, and just be aggressive off the catch a little bit more. Um, you know, because especially when we have guys out, you know, we need to obviously, you know, we need to play defense, but we have to try to score another end. And, um, you know, I got to just do a little better job of trying to find a little balance of, you know, playmaking and, you know, you know, sitting there and, uh, you know, and try to attack a little bit more sometimes. Oh, you said help me or help? Oh, the team. Um, yeah, I think in some some sense, like some some ways, um, you know, I think the the biggest thing that does help us is when we just you know play point five basketball and collectively just share the ball, um, you know, and make just a simple easy pass ahead of you. Uh, you know, I think that's the biggest thing, obviously, but. Um, you know, we've done a good job of, you know, playing out of, you know, three or four actions in our wins that have helped us, um, you know, get those wins, so. All right, Kyle, let's head over to Zoom for a couple of questions. We'll start with Chase. Hey, Kuz, um, you've talked about, you know, watching film ahead of games, and it seems like you, you try to do your homework going in. Um, how does that change with, you know, the uncertainty of protocols? It looks like, you know, Kyle, or, um, Kyle Lowry actually uh, went into protocol and just, you know, with the own guys on your own team, not knowing who's going to play, is, does it kind of get thrown for a loop at all? No, not at all. I mean, I'm a big fan of basketball. Um, I watch basketball every single night. So, uh, you know, Miami's still, you know, a formidable team. Obviously, I have a tire hero, but – you got guys like Duncan Robinson still playing, uh, Max Strauss, you know, the D2 guy, like a guy that's, you know, undrafted, playing really, really well. And then, you know, they got the, the Gabe Vincents of the world. So those guys, you know, they're good basketball players. And um, they've been playing well with those guys out, you know. You know, every, everybody's in the league for a reason. So, um, you know, you really can't take teams lightly now. Um, because when somebody has the chance to step up, you know, that's their moment. They want to play well. So, uh, you know, Miami still has a great team, have great young players that are bought into the system that they play. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, we got to strap it up tomorrow. So in that sense, um, do you have to, like, prepare for more players not knowing who's going to be out there? Or is there, you know, do you feel like you have to go deeper down the roster to know guys' tendencies, I should say? Uh, I mean, not really. Um, like I said, I mean, I watch basketball all the time. So, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's kind of, you know, when you've been in this league a long time, you know, that, that's something that you kind of just understand and know year in, year out. You know, guys' tendencies really never really change, um, you know, because that's muscle memory and what your brain and your body just kind of, you know, just does naturally. So, um you know, when, when you kind of understand a guy or see a guy once or twice, you kind of know what they're trying to do. So, uh, you know, that just comes with watching the game, really. What a Neil? Hey, Kuz, I don't think we asked you last time you spoke. I guess, how are you feeling, you know, post your week in protocols and 
you know, are you back to 100%? And how did you maybe try and, you know, keep your conditioning up while you were in protocols? Yeah, I mean, I was I was messed up. Um, you know, I was I was sick. Um, and I was down for six days. I didn't really do anything for the last six days. Um, so, uh, you know, coming back into those first three games, what it was Sac, Utah, Phoenix, I was, I was, it was, it was a struggle. It was definitely a struggle, you know, my breathing conditioning. Cause obviously, you know, when you're sitting out, um, during the season, uh, it's weird because, you know, you, we play games every other day. So, you know, when your body's, you know, has two days off or three days off, it's like, whoa, what are we doing right now? And then combat that with, you know, having COVID, you know, I was, I was struggling a little bit, but I, I think uh, from the Nick game and even yesterday, I, I feeling pretty good about myself and uh, my body. So. Uh, no, I do not. Uh, I think uh, AG is now in uh, uh, protocol uh, as as of now. Um, I think that's that's it. Uh, I think uh, TB is in protocol as well, um, and I, th I think that might be it right there. I have a hard time keeping track of it. It changes by the hour. Yes, we have. Yes. Uh, I do not. I do not have a number that I'd like to share. Uh, I think it ranges from no symptoms to very light symptoms. Um, I don't think there's been any severe issues beyond, um, you know, flu-like or common cold, uh, which is good. You know, obviously the concern, you know, underlying thing is the individual safety safety of their, you know, family and immediate, you know, folks around them. Um, so that, that's a positive, you know, obviously we have to uh, work around the, the guidelines and protocols set forth. There's not a whole lot we can do, uh, but wait and see if they uh, can get the consecutive negative test. Do you think the film last night what was the, the luck distribution of the Good shots that I didn't count them all, but uh, we did show quite a few of the ones we didn't like this morning. Um, there, there were a lot of good ones. You know, I think we were 11 of three, or excuse me, three of 11, rather, on paint attack threes. And those are the ones we want to generate. So those are great looks, you know, where whether it's a cut, a drive, a roll, uh, post up or offensive rebound kick out. Those are the threes we wanted to generate, and we only made three of them. So those, I think, are great. I'll take those 100 out of 100. Um, I think we were six or five of 22 on non-paint. Now, that doesn't mean they're all off the bounce. Some of those are catch and shoots, which, you know, I think for, for DB, for Corey, uh, working off pin downs, those are good shots for them. Uh, the ones we have to kind of stay away from are the ones early in the clock where we're not necessarily spaced or organized. And we could just kind of break it off and get into, you know, tough, contested uh, zero or one pass possession. And I think those are the ones we, you know, those are obvious. And, you know, the, we, there's plenty of good to greats. And there were some ones where it's easy to say, hey, we can get a better shot than that. And I, you know, I thought that was the pretty much the crux of what we showed this morning. Um, you know, aside from the defense, the offensive side, where, hey, first quarter, first half, the ball was moving. We had seven assists in the first quarter, 15 and a half. We wound up with 22 for the game. And a lot of that is predicated on making shots, which we struggled to do in the second half. We scored 41 points, so we didn't make a lot of, make a lot of shots. Um, but, you know, I thought we started to stagnate and didn't move the ball as well as we did that first half. We're still learning some of your nomenclature. You're, you're, like you are with us, but it's a lot more fun for us than it is for you. Is it? I think so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> When you use the phrase "suck up the game," mm -hmm. you're really referring to an opponent's defense. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, it could be our defense as well. You know, the, the changing of coverages, whether you're switching, um, you know, if you're up to touch, you're, you're blitzing the ball and pick and rolls, whether that's zone or, you know, uh, three-quarter court, you know, pressure or whatever it may be. 
um, just giving a team different looks throughout, depending on, uh, you know, in the post up, whether you're coming off the pass or off the cutter, if you're designating a guy to come, uh, all those things are kind of different, different ways to uh, change coverages and give teams different, different looks. I don't know when that went up. Honestly, I don't. Um, do you know who put it up there? I, no. I do not. Okay. But just a reminder. Uh, I don't know if it was one of our staff or could have been the go-go. I don't know. But I like it. <laughs> well, from now on, we will. Everybody. Um, it's, it's still a work in progress, honestly. Um, I like the pace at which we're playing and but just trying to find the balance of getting it out and getting it up. I think the kick aheads are great. Um, make or miss. We're, some, we're getting some really good looks. I think guys, Corey's been, you know, been benefiting from that, getting to the corners, early kick aheads, drives, corner threes. We saw that a couple of times in New York. Um, but finding that balance of, you know, getting it up quickly and just flowing into spots and, and, and being disorganized. So I think it's a, you got to find the mix. If we can sprint to those spots and look to kick ahead and attack early, I think it's great. Um, but we just don't want to live with early random actions, every possession down the floor. Uh, so I just think it's a read. We can kick it ahead, but if there's nothing there immediately, all right, let's get back to our spots. So now we can stay organized and flow into secondary offense. Um, I think, you know, he's, he's a guy, he's obviously been around in college you know, a lot of guys don't, don't stay for four years, but, um, I think he's a visual learner. I don't think you have to necessarily walk him through everything. If you tell him one thing or show him, he's capable of doing it. I think other guys process it, you know, after have doing it, you know, have, they have to have done it rather a couple of times, you know, where they have to walk through it on the floor, get the timing, get the spacing. They have to feel it. You know, I think some guys you show it to them or they read it, they've got it. Um, and I think it's just, it's just different for different guys, whatever that is, but he's pretty good at, you know, I can just tell him and he, he'll, he'll figure it out. I don't want to generalize. I think it varies from player to player. Um, I think the one easy thing you can kind of identify with after four years of anything, there's a good chance you've gone through some adversity. You know, you've gone through something, whether, you know, you, in basketball terms, you didn't play right away, uh, you were a red shirt, uh, there's an injury, um, you had to earn those minutes, you know, from your first year into your fourth, um, where I think, you know, if you hadn't had that time, that duration, maybe, you know, that whatever, six months was, you know, pretty easy for you. Honestly, that's what it is. Um, and now all of a sudden you get to that next level and you're at the highest, you know, point of your career or in your profession, you're at the highest level. And that's when you, you finally hit that first bout of adversity. That can be challenging for people. Um, I think most of us, you know, we kind of have to work our way up. A lot of times guys, you know, they're 18, 19 years old and they're rookies in the league and all of a sudden they made it. They're now at the pinnacle of their profession. Um, so I think and that's in general terms, but I think that's probably the biggest takeaway for me is just after that, that span of time, um, I think you, you learn how to, grow as a player, as a person. And I, don't, I think you also understand your strengths and weaknesses. I think it's night and day. Now, it might not translate into points or points generated, but um, there's a comfort level. I think there's a trust level, certainly with myself and the staff. And that trust, I think, is, is starting to accrue with his teammates. Um, you know, he's shown the ability to play making the open floor, play out of pick and rolls, make the right reads. Um, you know, I think because of that, because he's more decisive, guys are, you know, they, they've learned to space and react to his drives, um, give him a little bit more room to play. Uh, and I think it's good for him. It's good for us. Give me a moment. Go ahead. <laughs> Yep. 
it's understated. You know, I think uh, nothing to, you know, it's not a knock on Embiid, but people don't realize how big Denny is. I mean, honestly, I mean, he's, he's got great size. He's strong. We've seen how it translates on the defensive end, but that's another element. You know, if you're able to get downhill, he's got the ability to kind of slow play his drives, um, use angles, uh, create leverage and get to the rim. Uh, at times we've seen him be explosive, but, um, to your point, playing through contact is, is an underrated skill, learning to finish th through contact. Uh, that doesn't mean you're forcing the issue, but you get in there, there's, there's going to be big bodies. You know, how do you navigate around it or play through it? You know, I think it's, uh, uh, it, it's a great thing to see, and obviously he's capable of doing it, but you know, he, he's big too, and I, I think that bodes well for him. Um. Nothing really to at this point. Um, we'll see how it goes, and he'll be available tomorrow, um, as he has been the last two games. Um, and we'll see what it looks like tomorrow. I think it's questionable. He's available. It's questionable. I don't know what the PR term is. He's questionable. I'm going with, with questionable. <laughs> no, that's it. Uh, I'm heartless. I got nothing. Uh, yeah, he'll, he'll be there, and uh, he'll be questionable. All right, Coach, let's switch over to Zoom, and we'll start with Chase. Hey, Wes. Um, I, I think Neto entered protocol after we talked to you yesterday pregame. I'm just wondering kind of what was the timeline there for, for him, considering it was so close to when the game started? Well, I mean, we didn't have shoot around yesterday with the six o'clock game. So we had testing uh, about two o'clock, 2.30, had a uh, 3.15 or three o'clock walkthrough. And that's when we all had to test. So, and that's when they picked up Raul's, picked up uh, TB's uh, positive test. Um, so it's not, it's not ideal. You know, it's one of those things where um, you get the first positive, you, they have to run subsequent tests to see if that's, you know, false positive or not. Um, and then we're just waiting. So it, it, the timing is never, uh, never perfect. It, it just, it, it is what it is. And is there optimism that, uh, you know, KCP could not be too far away from returning? Cause I think it's been a, a week since he, he tested. Yeah, I'm hoping, uh, and once again, the, you know, just, we, at, at this point for him, he just has to get two negative consecutive negative tests. Um, so we're just kind of waiting, you know, and I'm not sure when that will be. And I know you were able to, um, you know, have the hardship players. I'm sure that helps. But just what has it done to kind of, you know, practicing? I know last year when they didn't have that, it was tough to just play five on five. Yeah, I mean, it still is, you know, because you, you're mindful of the the workload guys who are you know, logging those lo a lot of minutes. You don't want to tax them too much, but we, we have to get those guys up to speed. You know, a lot of it is pre and post practice, you know, working on terminology, understanding just a few basic sets. We're not going to get too complicated when those guys are on the floor. Uh, our coverages, um, and just so we, you know, when when they're out there, they can kind of blend in seamlessly. But you know, we have to kind of keep it simple uh, on both ends, so at least they can, uh, you know, hold water and allow us, you know, give us a little bit more depth. What about Neil? Hey, coach. Um... For Rui, has he progressed to 2v2 or 3v3 full contact with NBA players? Yes, he has. Uh, how about five on five? Just haven't had the chance to do it, you know, and it's uh, um, by my account, I'm not a medical professional. He looks great. <laughs> uh, he, he looks ready. So, you know, I think, um, you know, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves and skip steps. But, you know, I think when, when the time is right, we'll, we'll throw him out there. And for your hardship guys, do you expect Jordan Goodwin to be available to you tomorrow? Yes, I do. And do you foresee signing any more guys from the go-go, like Jaime or anybody, to get more bigs? Uh, well, in doing that, that means we, we have more positive tests. So hopefully not. No dis disrespect to those guys. But uh, but if, if that's the case, and then so be it. We'll, we'll find a way to you know fill the void and get those guys on board. And with the game yesterday, last time out that you took a little bit more than four minutes left, it seemed like Denny and Davis were, you know, getting into it a little bit. You know, I don't know if it was something on the offensive end when Davis took the shot and Denny set a screen. I guess, A, you know, how do you as a coach make sure that, you know, that doesn't 
you know, snowball into anything worse? And, you know, B, do you think it's, you know, just kind of frustration building up? Uh, to answer the second part, B, yes, th there is frustration. And, you know, obviously we're, you're getting your butt kicked. Everybody's frustrated. Um, it's not going well. Um, so I get it. It's an emotional game. Uh, but the first part of your question, you have to address it. And, you know, we addressed it this morning. I addressed it during the timeout last night. It's not uh, necessarily what you say. It's how you say it. And I think it's important for those guys to understand that. Um, there's a degree of accountability I think is important that we, we can be constructive, you know, when it comes to those relationships and try to hold each other accountable. But on the flip side, it, you got to come from a place of respect. And, you know, at, at times it's, you know, the frustration can get the best of you and it, it doesn't go well. But I don't think it's a underlying problem or, you know, it's going to be a reoccurring issue. We just put it on notice that this is what those expectations are and this is how we handle it. Thanks, Coach. All right, Coach, we'll finish up with Chris. Hey, Wes, I apologize if you've answered this before. What's the latest on Brad's health and safety protocol in terms of date of return? Still uh, questionable. Um, we're hoping to have him tomorrow, but we're still waiting. Um, um, so we'll see. We just have to, you know, wait, let it run its course and get the, uh, get the update as soon as it uh, comes through. And what's kind of what's he been able to do in terms of getting in a run, getting in shots? Uh, yeah, I mean he can do all of that on his own. That's the that's the hard part. We can't uh, facilitate that, uh, you know, because he's in the protocol condition. Um, you know, and I, I know he's he's got access to to a gym and he's able to do those type things. He hasn't played in a week, so if he does play tomorrow, I can't imagine you know he's going to be in you know peak condition. But I know he hasn't just sat around and done nothing. Well, I think you know him well enough that when people try to put restrictions on him minutes wise, he's not a real fan of that. So when he does come back, is that a conversation you got to have with him? No, I think it's you know, he's he's if he's available, he'll you know we'll look at his whole stretch, his body of work, and you know we, we've had this happen before when he's missed games and, and come back and he's just like, hey, give me a nod, give me a look, I'll get you out and get you back, but we'll pencil him in for the his standard, you know. Uh, minutes, you know, because you know, obviously we, we want them all on the floor and I think on the floor is good for us.